topics a little bit. Um, and actually, what, what I'm presenting here is very, very short. And uh, well, we'll see how, how interesting it, uh, it, it is to you. But it, it's, a, it's about small language scattering. And it's just simply demonstrating two things. One is uh, well, the main features of the samples for small language scattering in MaxMass. And the other one uh, being uh, presenting you with an e learning platform that we have for. Uh, for teaching and, uh, and doing simulations with max tests. So I had the idea that maybe you will access uh, via the internet my computer results in Denmark, but I'm not sure how well that will work out. So there's also a zip file with everything needed, so you may run the same thing uh, locally instead. So yeah, very quick discussion of the uh, science. I guess you all basically know science. Uh, and the sample models, and then uh, I'll talk a little about the e-learning infrastructure. So, uh, as you know, uh, science can be used for many types of uh, material. Um, very often, for instance, for the biological systems, it's a molecule, which is in a buffer solution. Um, so maybe you will have things like self-assembling uh, uh, macromolecules in, in a thin solution. So maybe these will form little spheres or little cylinders or some structure in a thin solution. Um, it's an, essentially an isotropic scattering. Um, and uh, well, to first order, elastic. And uh, of course, well, small angles, that has to do with small cues, which has to do with the long orders. So it is uh, a method which is relevant for uh, uh, yeah, larger than atomic scales, uh, typically. So for macromolecules and so on. Um, it actually has, uh, well, it's it's a low sequence noise method, um, in, in the sense that, that it's just kind of a perturbation to the type of beam. Um, so you need to include a beam stop here. Um, you can apply uh, contrast variation methods. So for parts of your molecular chemistry, you may usurate it, um, yeah. thereby enhancing the contrast between the hydrogen rich and the uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, deuterium rich parts of, uh, of the compound. Um, so instrument requirements that is a good correlation via uh, uh, long, uh, uh, yeah, and then a long flight path uh, after. The detector says that's complete mess after the sample. So between sample and detector, we need a relatively long path, flight path because a small angle will then correspond to a, a reasonable distance out from the uh, uh, yeah the target. So in my class, we have various uh, models for this. Um, yeah, there's one up there called uh, any sample that is. It's essentially a kind of, uh, of template. The intention is that you go in and you define your own intensity as function of Q. So if you have something very complicated, uh, which is not, say, a set of cylinders or elliptic cylinders or something you can approximate with a Grignier uh, uh, shape uh, or any of the other things, then there's a way to, to easily access that. Um, then, uh, as I explained also, uh, we have the possibility of using the models that are included in, uh, in SASU uh, because they have been kind enough to us that they put all their models in, in small C codes. So basically these can be imported uh, in, in MaxS. Um, just exemplifying, I will look at uh, a component called sans uh, spheres, and what it has is is hard dilute spheres, meaning, uh, and they are model dispersed. So there's only one possible radius, um, and they are in a thin solution, so they don't interact. And what you specify here is simply uh, a radius in in Armstrong, um, mod your uh, uh, yeah. Part, part of the volume fraction is, so how much of this substance is actually available in the solution, uh, and then an excess uh, scattering intensity uh, to get the contrast. 
and that is essentially it. Then it has, of course, geometry as usual, and it has a focusing, and uh, it's a good idea to use the focusing because, uh, as we discussed, uh, it's, it's an isotropic technique. There's not much point in simulating backscattering when you're doing some backscattering. Not a lot of signal moving over there. Um, for SASU models, it is uh, about the same. Um, there's geometry, there's focusing, and then what I didn't show here, which is kind of stupid, ah, it's on the next slide. That is model index, model scale, and model parameters. So this is something that answers your SAS model from SAS view. And here's an example of some of these. You see you have up to 50, at least 58 here. So different uh, models, be it, uh, let's say, isotropic ones that have no correlation between X and Y on your detector. You might also have somewhere, let's say, the cylinders are ordered in a certain direction. So there's a, there's a difference in in horizontal and vertical scale. Um, so, so all of these have a set of parameters that you then define to the component in a set of curly brackets. There is an example uh, instrument included with my stats. So if you're interested in the details, that's probably where I would go and, uh, and have a look. So as you can probably feel, I'm also not exactly the complete expert on this, but uh, that, that's how it is. Um, now we at least have a kind of, uh, of overview of it. Now to uh, our e-learning uh, platform. So I don't know if, uh, if some of you know about this already. Uh, it's called eNutrons.org. Um, and it, it's a web infrastructure for teaching on neutron scattering. Um, it relies on three different pillars. Uh, one being a kind of uh, textbook. Uh, so it's based on MediaWiki, and it's actually Kim Neffman's lecture notes from the University of Copenhagen for the neutron scattering course. That's the basics of this, and it means that that it covers basic scattering uh, uh, theory, neutron production, instrumentation, all the different kinds of uh, of disciplines within neutron scattering. How to simulate this, including simulation projects on neutron scattering. And, uh, and actual exercises. Um, yeah, so it's a uh, yeah, it's a master's. I believe it's a master's course, right? They, they, it's after the bachelor's uh, uh, level. So reasonably advanced and reasonably dedicated to neutron scattering, but uh, simple enough that you could use it. You could use it for your students say, or parts of it. Um, yeah. So there's this textbook in there, which uh, allows equations, etc. Then there is uh, the Moodle platform. Uh, Moodle is the so-called uh, learning management pro uh, platform. And um, one of the things this is being used for, uh, not only by us, but by others, that being a so-called MOOC. And a MOOC that's a massive open online course. So the idea is that it, it's a software that allows you to do a university course on the net. Um, so what you see in here, that is, uh, that is actually some of the science related material. Um, so you have here a set of slides from uh, Ken Mortensen at the University of Copenhagen. Um, you have uh, the theory of uh, yeah, calculating structure factors, etc. for, for science. Um, all of the bits necessary to understand what more of the is. And then finally, uh, a simulation quiz um, for small things that are scattered. And such a simulation quiz is actually based on next steps. So the third pillar of the platform, that's an online simulator. Uh, so at the top you see a sketch of the instrument. And these are the input parameters to a pre-configured uh, max size small angle scattering machine. Um, so did I, I didn't show output from it. Uh, so maybe, in fact, I will, I will just jump and show you that it is there. And then we also have an idea if this is at all realistic to do across the internet to the other side of the planet. Um, so I don't know. And 
That's the same page, in fact. That's more than a scattering machine. So you have, have the same kind of information you would have uh, in a well written instrument file, uh, documenting the inputs, etc. So, what we can do here, uh, radius of pinholes, collimation lengths, etc. One thing I could do is I could just very quickly do a series of, uh, of science experiments. So I will do four experiments. I have four different kinds of part spheres in the thin solution, 100 through 400 uh, angstroms in radius. And uh, then it's possible to do a scan, just like it in MacGuigan. So I'll do that with the four simulation steps here. Like that. And uh, then we'll see how, uh, how this works. <coughs> So this is now running, and admittedly there's a little trick here, yeah, so this is not too slow actually. The trick is that if you start a simulation that is already in the data part the database, there's a course one point in the way to So this is a way we gain a little bit of, uh, of speed, which is, which is good. Um, so what you have here is uh, almost a normal MaxFast uh, scan output, you have three in, in three uh, monitors in the instrument uh, that then measure across uh, the radius of, uh, of particles and this means if I then if I then press the monitor labels down here from the scan we actually get a nice representation I'll just uh, I'll just apply a lot of to that you get a nice representation of uh, of the small angle scattering as it varies changing the particle size. Yeah, so you see it's, it's quite powerful for uh, especially for, for uh, teaching purposes. And I thought it would be relevant for you guys to maybe try this. And uh, yeah there's also an MC display up here and so forth. And if you wish you can get the, uh, the simulation data as a top T set. So it's 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 like running next test, except that you actually don't change anything in the instrument file. For the good reason that you can have arbitrary code in, uh, in an instrument file, and you know, IT admins typically don't like to put this in the wild. So, yeah, so it's only administrators that are playing the instrument files. Okay, so if I just jump back to the, uh, to the exercise, um, the, ex the exercise actually includes enrolling yourself to Neutrons. So, if you follow the, uh, the top link, this will take you to a page that looks uh, like this, where you fill in your information. And uh, once, once you have done that, uh, all of you that, then let me know, then I'll, I'll actually let you in, and, uh, and you will have access. And then the idea is that you, you actually carry out one of these exercises from, from the learning uh, material in the room. Yep. So we, so we can just uh, yeah. So, so we, in fact, in fact, if I just if I just go through the last couple of slides, then we can turn off the camera also. So, so the idea is you would go and enroll yourself.